AJ, one of the co-hosts here at Behind the Mask, and Laurie and T are joining me today. This is episode 41, The Masks of Multitasking. Just a friendly reminder that anything discussed in this podcast is not to be used as a diagnosis or a replacement for conversations with your own doctors, therapists, psychologists, or other medical professionals. Um, we're actually talking multitasking, which is funny because, you know, some of us are a little more skilled at it. Some of us are not. Um, I have had my moments where I'm definitely not a multitasker, where other times I can listen to an audiobook while I'm driving or doing just about anything or reading another book. <laughs> so I've done that before. And Lori looks at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll kind of talk about that. It kind of goes along with our personality <coughs> traits too. There's some science behind saying that, you know, certain personality traits, like we talked about in the last episode, can often have more skills or less skills in the multitasking realm. And it's more of a how quickly you can switch between one task and the other. Some people are a little more skilled in that. Um, we'll find like Lori's a, like a social butterfly and she can kind of um, shift or monitor multiple things at once while she's doing something else. Whereas me, myself, I know I often prefer just things in a linear motion, like, okay, this has to get done and this has to get done. And I love my lists. <laughs> so um, those are definitely some impacts. So we're going to kind of hop in and just chat a little bit about that. I, we went over the notes right before, and I, I was, I'm curious, either one of you have any thoughts about what I read about your personality traits, if, if that fit well or not with what you guys think you are. Uh, am I a social butterfly? Yes, I'm a social butterfly. Do I flip <laughs> from thing to thing? Yes. Yes. Um, I have been told throughout my whole life, I do it well. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's kind of interesting because I feel like, you know, being an extrovert um, and yet being a feeling and a, a empathetic, um, how, I, a lot of my, what's in my personality traits, I'm driven by helping others and I'm driven by, by just that teaching and nurturing. And, and I just <clears throat> kind of funny because I feel like it was all those things I didn't get, you know, but I really worked on them and, and honed those skills. And I like to people, I like to help people make Help them feel connected. Help them feel like I hear them. I'm listening, and and yet I need to do that with multiple people. So I love the party, and I love the, you know, the the business meetings and things like that, where I get to do that on a level that is just amazing for me and fills me up, and and yet. I get told I'm filling them up. So I love it because I feel like it's a very reciprocated um, process for me. So yeah, I would say I agree with much of what was said. <laughs> All right, UT. Well, I'm, a, I'm very introverted. However, I have really good people skills. And, um, and I mean, considering what I do, I, it, a lot of people are like, oh, that's no brainer. But if you knew you know, added to that, I have social anxiety and stuff like that. But with, as an introvert, <clears throat> I can multitask with people as well. And I can juggle a lot of things and, and accomplish a lot of things, switching back and forth and whatnot. But I do need a break from it. I don't get recharged from it. So I love mm -hmm. doing it. It is a passion. I love when I see people, uh, when I can help people, um, uh, feel good about themselves and uh, grow and whatnot, <clears throat> much like Lori was talking about, but it exhausts me. So mm -hmm. I have to stop and I don't always stop. And so that's the challenge has been the challenge, lifelong challenge is knowing my, my limits, being able to set those boundaries and being able to stop and not feel like I'm weak because I needed to stop. Right. Yeah. And I, it, I, I'm glad we found the new, like the information about this. Cause I feel like a lot of, cause even Lori, when I had first mentioned, you know, let's write some notes. She's like, what well, does it have to do with our personalities? 
I was like, well, you know, like, you know, extroverts maybe can do it better, you know, and she's like, really? She's like, I don't think it has to do with my personality, but then we really did some research and we're like, oh yeah, it actually does. And it, um, I know like one of the quotes we found is um, people with high levels of impulsivity and sensation seeking often reported greater multitasking behavior. Um, and I'm like, okay, I can understand that. And Lori found a really cool article that I'll put the link in the description for. Um, it actually is the article, it's the best career paths based on your Myers-Briggs personality type. So it goes along with our personalities from last week. Um, and it's a specific quote. It says extroverts are often skilled in most multitasking and fast paced work environments because they gather their energy within groups of people where introverts work well with smaller groups or alone and prefer to take on tasks one at a time. So what I was asking them to kind of say if they preferred or agreed with. Um, so our personality types specifically, this article did break down each one of the 16. Uh, myself as an INTJ um, fall under the category, we tend to be perfectionists, prefer to work in roles where we don't have to interact with others quite as much. I totally agree with that. And uh, some of the good career uh, paths for this personality type tend to be software developing, uh, executives, personal finance advisor or investment maker, um, which I can agree. I can see some of them. Not really much of the whole money person, so that's probably not not my thing. But executive and software developer, I can definitely get behind. I enjoy that kind of stuff. Lori, um, they tend to be social butterflies, very energetic, and prefer roles in which they work cooperatively with others. Some potential career paths for those who receive ENFJs are a sales manager, an HR specialist, advertising executive, or often work in public relations. NT is, um, she prefers to, well, her personality type prefers to work in roles which they can provide a service such as a dentist, elementary school teacher, customer service representative or librarian. And I'll also say therapist uh, on that because I think that definitely falls into that category. So I think she's definitely doing a job that she's uh, skilled in. Um, and I know in multitasking, there tends to be a, back and forth is there some people that say well the science says that our brains aren't wired to uh, you know do more than one thing at once but honestly like we kind of do already I mean we walk and most often talk <laughs> and just even some stuff basic stuff like I said at the beginning you know I can listen to an audiobook and read a completely different book and still comprehend both of them <clears throat> <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> nauseous just thinking about it. <laughs> and Lori's like, oh, and the work, and not the worst part, the part that I think is also funny is Lori, when I, she hears me listening to an audiobook, I read it, listen to it at two times speed. So they're reading it twice as fast <laughs> as it actually was there. And they're I not reading they're everything. Chipmunks. <laughs> and I don't understand a word that they're saying. <laughs> I think some of these things, uh, there's a learning curve, so yep. or a muscle memory. Um, okay. So we tend to be able to multitask with things that we know, or yep. we're more likely to, especially if it's something we know or we like. So mm -hmm. for me, like multitasking might include, uh, sometimes it's crocheting, I'm just gonna use that I can crochet, listen to an audiobook and still know what's going on in the house. Um, so, and the other reason I think that our brains are somewhat wired for multitasking is because um, we are constantly receiving millions of points of data into our brain at any given moment. Um, I, it, it's phenomenal how much our brain can pick up and take in and put in its spot and decide what we're going to focus on. Now, it's not always accurate and often can be faulty. And that's usually what I see with my clients who are experiencing trauma. Uh, that's where, the, where they get stuck at is they're so, their brain took in only parts of the information and not all of the information. And so it doesn't store accurately. I'm kind of going off on a bunny trail there. But anyway, um, so we are capable of, 
of multitasking in that way. And then again, like I said, I think it's what we've trained to do, what we like. It depends on what we like. Like EJ, obviously you like uh, reading, you like taking in information. And so it, you thrive on that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I, I can't, um, I'm kind of envious of that because I like the same things. I just do it at a different in a different way. Um, but I might not be li listening to two books, but I might be listening to a book, reading a book, watching TV, you know, mm -hmm. doing other things. And that's certainly how I studied when I was in school. They kept saying that was bad study habits. But if I didn't do that, I my grades didn't didn't do well. So, yeah, I I felt like I remember you know, being at Gonzaga and just my favorite thing is to have a pair of headphones on if I really want to stay in my zone with some kind of classical music or music that's got this consistent beat to it. It's like my brain needed to know that the next beat was coming and the next beat was coming and it helped me with my writing and it helped me with my focus. Um, interestingly enough, we all three like reading, but we hear it and do it differently. Um, Aaron and I have talked about the fact that I struggle with the audible because I, I can, in many other ways, multitask in. But if that book is on and I'm in the kitchen or I'm, you know, my oldest son will tell me all the time, he, they'll be at work. And my youngest son too, they'll listen to books, watch movies, all this stuff, right? And then they're doing their job. I don't think I could do that. Not and take a test on what I just heard. Like I would be like, I don't know, I think his name was John and he did something and, um, you know, I think there was some girl involved and I would just, I cannot stay focused audibly. But one thing I think EJ has noticed lately, if I have that physical book in front of me and I want to read it, I'm in my zone. You, the World War III could happen and I'd still keep reading my book. Yeah, like I'll, I just, I'll come out of my room and she'll be really into it. And I'll, I'll go to say something like, oh, it's this. And, and she just totally ignores me. And I'm like, what'd I do? And then she's like, huh, wait a second. What are you talking to me? Did you say something? <laughs> so there's there's a lot of things kind of going on there. There's, it comes back to that. What do you like? Are you interested? And like, I wouldn't have been, if, if I did the multitasking studying, like if I had something going on in the back, ground and all this stuff I only worked for subjects that I was familiar with liked or enjoyed and so just naturally picked it up but right. if it was something along the lines of like math I needed silence because wow. that wasn't a topic or subject that my brain easily grasped onto so I needed that space to be able to focus yeah. and I had to be careful because as a speed reader so <laughs> yeah I can't speed read things. I need to learn, learn. Mm -hmm. I have to slow it down mm -hmm. if it's yeah. something unfamiliar to me. Right. Yeah. And often, you know, I know a lot of people when we talk to auto audiobooks, so I'll say like, <clears throat> for me, I cannot read um, a nonfiction book on Audible or any kind of audio book because my nature is to take notes on things like that. So fictional books, I have no problem listening to as an audiobook, but if somebody's like, oh, there's this thing on Audible or, oh, there's this nonfiction book, I'd be like, yep, nope, need a physical book so I can either, it's the, it's the motions of highlighting or taking yes. notes. Me too. And I, so there's, so that, and then it's like, so I often don't read a lot of nonfiction books because I don't have the, I'm a little restless, so I can't sit still for long. And so I was watching Lori the last few weeks and She's been reading through some books and taking notes on what she's reading. And like, all of a sudden I'll be in the middle of something. She'll just start like, oh, this is really cool. And then she'll like go into explaining it. And I'm like, how, how can you switch between the two of those right now? <laughs> like, I don't, you know, and like, she's got good information. It was just like, okay. 
and then I but again like in that way her and I are similar because she's taking notes and she's reading a nonfiction book and that's how I need to read a nonfiction book so when everyone's like I keep thinking like oh I want to read that book or oh I want to read that book or oh I want to read that book there's a, hundreds of nonfiction books I want to read but I don't have them physically in front of me so I can't like I can't bring myself to even consider reading them um, whereas in nonfiction, I don't have to take notes. It's a fictional story. It's a fantasy. It's a science fiction. It's a romance. I know the concept is coming, you know, so it's, it's not. It's and it activates yeah. a different part of your brain than, than uh, knowledge yeah, yeah. does. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, you know, music, I, I love music, but when I'm writing, I get anxiety listening to worded music. So I can't focus. And so there's times when we're, you know, doing something and Lori might turn the radio on. Like, I actually like, I need to insert myself and exit to my room and like put my headphones on to drown out the music if I'm trying to focus on writing something because I could just myself, I can't focus on such the task because the music's giving me anxiety. But you turn on instrumental music no problem native american flute music japanese music any kind of instrumental and i'm usually okay with it that's because um when you're writing and talking it's using your language centers in your brain when you hear music with words then your brain's trying to pick up on that the language the communication you know whatever right. but um and so you're you're multitasking that part of your brain yeah yeah Which and is, so well okay i gotta say this so that's where I had such a hard time today with our research because so much of it said multitasking is a myth. Multitasking isn't possible. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, they tried to throw in some science and whatever. But I'm like, are you really like dealing with humans when you're talking about this? Because Personally, I think the creation of what we are and what we can do is so phenomenal. And the only thing that I kind of, uh, so there's a, a different word that they like to use versus multitasking, which was called task flipping. Um, they said that, you know, some people can build that skill and you know, do that. And then what was the, I think it was 2.4 or 2.5% of people mm -hmm. um, are actually good at multitasking. They, it's the, uh, yeah, their brain, oh, there's only like 2.5% 2, 2 of people that their brain is wired to be able to learn that skill set of switching really quick. So I just really, I don't know. I felt like how much were you actually observing people in like an everyday environment, not like a test environment? Yeah, I was kind of wondering like, that I'm myself. Like, because we drive, driving is probably the most multitasking in my mind that we humans on this earth have to do all the time. And if you don't drive, you know, you're riding your bike or you're taking the bus, but you still have to multitask to do those things in my mind, because you kind of, like you said, T, there's so much information coming in, right? And we have to process it and we have to, and, and I just feel like, well, what do you call that then? If you don't call it multitasking, what do you call that? Is that task flipping? I don't know, but you know. I think, I think what they're trying to get at is that um, if you were to slow it down, right? If you were, it's like a video, slow it down. So it's frame by frame, then we're not multitasking. We're doing this, then this, and it just might happen really fast. Um, yes. and then a lot of the things that we do quote unquote multitask is autom autonomic, I think is what they call it. But anyway, anyway, it's one, it's, um, are systems that are on an automatic, like breathing and our heart rate. So there's a part of our brain that that's all automatic. Like it just, it just happens. Mm -hmm. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to think to breathe. We don't have to think to, uh, for our heart to beat. 
Um, it's not that our brain is involved in that, but it's behind the scenes. So in that sense, um, but even then, if you were to slow that way down, it's only one heartbeat at a time. It's only one breath at a time. And I think that's what they're getting at. What we experience as multitasking isn't that scientific. We're not looking, we're not experiencing the science of it. We're not breaking it down. The, but what happens is um, when we are multitasking and the way we experience it, we are often um, have some sort of organization that if I do this task, it completes two things at once. If I, you know, if I do this, then this, then this, then I can have two projects completed. So that's called grouping, right? Yeah, grouping them together. Right. And so um, I think I think that we're using um, we're talking about two different things when we're talking when the scientists are talking and when what we are doing and experiencing are talking about. So um, I do think that in that way, we do multitask. Uh, we get many things done uh, in a period of time together. And, um, and some are better at doing more than others, uh, but most of us can walk and talk at the same time. <laughs> but the scientists would say, well, that's because the walking part turns to the automatic like the automatic party brain takes over um you know so it doesn't require thinking <laughs> to walk uh, although if you ever watch me walk you would know that's not the case <laughs> <laughs> okay okay EJ, yeah. i cut you off i'm sorry no it's okay yeah i was just thinking like and, and i don't mean to like call you out for the music stuff because i know we, you know because we joke about it a lot in the house it's just like I'm like, I have to leave because I'm like, I can't focus. And I'm like, well, I don't understand how you can focus. And I watched you dance around the living room with your book. Like that was, I was, I was like, I like, uh, yeah. I and had so two it's, goals, get the steps <clears throat> in, read the book. So, you know. Right. So, yeah. So, I, so I have like, it, it's just funny. And I, I, I definitely see how we're similar and I definitely see how we're different. And I, I know that I'm glad to explain the multitasking because I feel like I, I'm a very linear person anyways. So like to do X, I have to get this done, you know, or to get to the next step, I have to do this. Um, and there are things I've been able to multitask with per se and like switch quicker. Whereas others I'm like, and I, and I need to, I know I need to work on the, the music thing because I'm like, I need, it's, it's in my life. Like I like music. I love the music you have on. So it's not that I don't like it. It's just when I'm trying to focus, I just can't do it. And I, I've tried <laughs> so many times. And I feel bad when I have to go in my room and like turn my headphones on with like loud, like flute music just to drown it out, just to get focus done. <clears throat> Cause I don't want to be that way. Like, can't like, is that a skill set? Like I can learn, like, is that just in general? Like, can people learn to do that? Like something that maybe they're not good at. Can they actually learn that? I, I mean, I think they, I think necessity breeds uh, innovation is not what the saying is. So if it's necessary, then yes, you can learn it. Anybody can learn it. But um, if it's not necessary, then why would we put the energy toward that? Mm -hmm. And it sounds and it sounds like it's when it's when you're needing to write or communicate that having that kind of music is is not useful for for you. But do you like it on when you're cleaning or do you like it? Oh, yeah, I love, you know, yeah, I have, so, you know, I, I have no problem with Lori having it on and yeah, when I'm cleaning or I'm, you know, doing a project, just hanging out. yeah, yeah I, I don't mind it. It's just those certain times I'm like, can I get, so those this? are just, yeah. So those are just times, you know, you need to accommodate that. Um, yeah. And it makes sense. It makes sense to me because like I said, you're to write and do those type of activities you're using. Mm -hmm the same similar area of the brain than than the worded music um because if it's some music you want to sing along to you're activating your language center right and i because it's funny because i've read like i write fan fiction 
I'm calling myself out. I write fan fiction and I, I've read so much. And I often will see an author will say, oh, I was reading this or listening to this song on repeat while I was writing this story. I tried listening to a song on repeat while I was writing something. And I started writing the lyrics out because I could, couldn't focus on anything else but the lyrics. And so the next thing I know, the st- in, in the middle of the story, I'm like typing out the lyrics and that's all I can focus on. I'm like, how do these people do this? Right. And that's because they have a different uh, wiring. Their wiring is different. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. And, and they're able to, what it does is that, yeah, that song may be on, but they're not really hearing it. Mm. so they're not in tune to it and so it's just in the background and um the brain just their brain just perceives it that way and they're able to do that moms can do that a lot they can audio filter you (laughs) have to to survive (laughs) and those moms who can't do a lot of yelling like shut up (laughs) (laughs) i'm i'm kind of in between like i can do it for a while i can tune it out for a while but there comes a a point where certain amount of noise certain volume of noise certain rhythm i'm i'm no not doing it stop you know um it's usually repetitive noise um so yeah it's just how our brains are wired and if here's here's what i tell my clients sometimes our brains get to a certain point where it that's 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 the deal. Like I have clients with some brain damage and stuff like that. Mm. Like not what you would think of brain damage, but it does impact their memory or it does impact their organizational skills. And so they have to develop tools to assist them. They have to work around it. So EJ, there's nothing wrong with putting on headsets and and putting on the kind of music that does help you while you're working. There's not, that's not a flaw. That's just a, 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 what works best for you. And um, yeah, I, if, yeah, because I, I just feel me, bad. I, oh, go oh. ahead, Eden. Yeah, I was just gonna say yeah, because I feel bad when those times happen because sometimes we may be wanting to play a card game or we doing something else, and I'm like, do you have to have the music on? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it might depend on how tired you are. Yeah, if if you're tired, sense. or you've had a long series of having to multitask or or a lot of I, you know, this and this and this and this, and it's constant. You may need that period where that part that that you only have to focus on one thing at a time, so that you can just kind of get yourself back together. And um, that's just that makes sense because as an introvert, I regroup by myself and on my own, whereas extroverts yeah. loves people. So with that, and you like that linear you like that I'm going to do this then I'm going to do this that feels good for you that works for you so if but that doesn't mean you can't go 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 it just means you need to go 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 and take a break okay whereas Lori on the other hand if she's got too much downtime she's going to need some time to go 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 in some form or fashion right Yes. Okay. Yes. It's making more sense now. You know, it's interesting. Remember we were sitting out in my sunroom the other day Uh and you were like, I don't get what you love about being out here. And I was trying to think of how to explain it to you, like Mm -hmm. what I love about it. But something that Tina said really kind of clicked in me. I love it because there's the sounds of the traffic. There's people walking by. There, well, I'm sitting in this house and I might as well be in four padded walls because I'm going crazy. I love the sunroom because I can, there's so many sensations physically and mentally that it brings me peace. It brings me I didn't even think about it till you just said that T and I'm like, that's what I love about it. I get to have all those sensations and all those feelings and, and be in this beautiful setting that I created for myself. It's like, it's amazing. And, you know, being chronically ill, 
for a long time, you do get stuck in certain scenarios and certain rooms and beds and you have to sit in the same chair in the same spot because everything hurts and aches and whereas when I go out into the sunroom even when I'm sick it will make me feel better because there's movement there's sound there's connectivity that I apparently thrive on and I need and that so yeah again makes I, sense yeah. because that going out there is like I yeah I, yeah because it's not that I don't like being outside because I love going to a park or I love going to like for a little hike or going and seeing some water or something I just yeah you're like oh I gotta spend all day out there and I'm like why there's <laughs> noises out there see I <laughs> I was like, people could walk by and want to talk to me. That like, like no, I'm really back in my hole. <laughs> See, I I like the idea of the sunroom um, because it would be a way for me to feel like the world was still there and I didn't have to interact. Okay. So like, I would love like a wraparound porch that was semi-private, but not completely. And to be able to sit on my porch and watch people and and just to, and to feel the outside to feel all that and and not have to engage if I didn't want to so I'm kind of in between the two of you on that one right yeah well and I explained to EJ too there are times I, I need to draw within I need to be still I need to process things and when I do that because I know my nature I will then put on the headphones. Um, and that's my, that's my clue, my cue to the outside world. I don't need you right now. I need you to be out there and I need to be in here and I need to be doing what I'm doing. And that's, it's just my physical cue to myself and to others. Mm -hmm. Lori's not going to be engaging with you right now. She's right. going to be focused on x y and z and but i don't need it as often but i do need it and what i have learned as i've grown and matured and worked on these things is even an extrovert needs quiet time i've had to i've had to hone the skill of learning to sit and be still so that something can come to me that would otherwise just fly right past, right? Mm -hmm. I get, I often get told stop and smell the roses and I'm like, I'm smelling them as I go, <laughs> you know? But sometimes I do have to stop and smell the roses. Right. I have to take in that very individual task or thing in front of me and I have to be still. Right. But Which I, I don't think need it for as long as, others maybe do right which I think actually leads into kind of our second piece of this is yeah. now like we know our personality traits we've talked about multitasking when and how we can and can't but like how does knowing our personality traits really communicate to others how can we communicate with others because Lori and I obviously have two different personality traits how do we communicate that to each other explain and so doing things like this, we talk it out. We talk about the why. Why does she enjoy going out to her son room, whereas I don't enjoy it as much? Or why can I listen to music, like instrumental music when I'm writing, whereas she's okay, you know, listening to regular music? Um, you know, and we're, I'm just saying those as examples because those are kind of current events going on in our lives because we live together. And so husband and wives often deal with similar things. They're always sometimes different personalities. Um, and for me, like when I have a task to do, I want to break it down into steps, often doing one thing at a time to get said thing done. Whereas Lori's like, well, let's just do this. And, it, you know, so there's her and I are different in that way. So I think, I don't know, from my perspective, I think definitely communicating with people and knowing your personality type is important um, because it can give you the, the like the words and the terminology to often explain that because I feel like sometimes when people just say well I don't like that 
that's not really a reason why you don't do or you do something or don't do something. And I'm going to add in something that uh, keeps popping up in my in my mind is I think sometimes understanding that personality types and way of doing things isn't about strengths or weaknesses per se. Like just because uh, one person likes this and thrives under this circumstance doesn't make this person over here less than, more than, or anything like that. It's just different. And um, I think oftentimes we either do that to ourselves or others do it to us. Like, well, why can't you, you know, when you hear that phrase, like, well, why can't you, well, what, well, why is that a problem that I can't, you know? So don't, don't push me into a box. Don't, don't um, assume that just because I need a break means I'm weak. It means I'm, I'm strong enough to know that I need this break right now so I can come back in and do what I need to do. Um, mm-hmm. But we're, the society drives us so much that if we can't do, 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 and we need some sort of break or we need to slow it down, that somehow we're doing it wrong. And or that's not deficient. the case at all. Yeah. And or you're, you're deficient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It has nothing to do with that. It's just, I'm going to get to point B, but I'm going to get there far better if I can do it my way yeah. and how, and what I know best and what works for me best. But if I try to do it your way, I'm going to be a frazzled mess by the time I get there. And that's, that's something Lori and I have had to learn between our personality differences. And because of that, because we figured that out, we tend to thrive together. Now we just know, we just know, yeah. you know, yeah. that I truly enjoy some of the, the energy she brings in and I need it because I do need it sometimes, but I also need that time to go, okay, let me catch my breath. (laughs) And, and the same goes for Lori. She needs to stop sometimes. And if someone isn't in her life that is comfortable stopping, she might not. Right. But then that person needs to, yep. Then that person needs to be able to be okay with her then you know, now she needs to recharge in her social and, and, her, and all that energy that she has. Yeah. I think I was thinking about when you talk about how do you make it work? I can honor the fact that you like to do lists. I don't mind doing lists. It's not my cup of tea, so to speak. I, I do make lists. I do have them. I just don't. Um... Well, yeah, there's a difference between a grocery list and a, these are the things that we have to do for our road trip. Yeah. And... yeah. <laughs> but so here's I the... what I can do. What I was going to say what I can do to, to honor that. And what I was trying to do the other day when we were talking was I can let you and make those lists and do those things. And I think I mentioned it the other day. Let me know when you get to the end and then I can join in because I just can't join in in this linear process thing that you have going on because it'll drive me insane. So I'm like, that's really great that you're doing this. You make your list and let me know when we get to the end where you might need me to do something. Just (laughs) clue me in and then I will step in. I don't want to know the process. I don't want to know how it all happened. Here's the great thing because she's making the list you don't have to. Amen. Amen. Yes, I know. I don't want to make all those lists. (laughs) And then once EJ is done making the list, she knows what to tell you to do. (laughs) Right? Which is so great. And then I'm totally good. I'm like, I say it all the time. Give me a task. I'll go do it. I don't necessarily want to come up with all the steps to figure it out. That's just not my, my personality trait or my skill factor. So. Right. And I, I, I like that too. I think, and I, (laughs) sometimes I, I admit like, sometimes I'm like, well, I need to write the list. And it, I, maybe it's a, just cause it, that's how my brain thinks. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a math and science person. There's, there's steps to get to something. I don't just go from two plus two is four without saying, okay, well, it's two and two, and there's a linear process to get there. You know, how to figure out the cosine of an angle or, you know, that it's all like, there's a step to that. And in, you know, our math and science, we have to lay out the steps. So that's how my brain thinks. 
which is probably why I enjoy math and science so much because there's a linear process to it. Like you don't just get to like the circumference of a circle without, you know, doing some math and steps in between. And I, I know you, Lori, you kind of joke, it's like, I don't like math. <laughs> like you're like, I don't know. You know, she's like, it's I can do business I math. Speak. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, that makes sense. And um, I know, like, yeah, we're getting ready to, you know, take a couple of a week road trip and yeah, there's things that have to be done. There's, I need to have the oil changed in my car. We need, you know, get the tires checked. There's things that just typical things, but Lori's like, yeah, just let me know what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. Don't, I don't need to live. <laughs> I think that this is a really great time to talk about how we build the skills. And look at that list that we found that I really liked. Um, EJ, are you able to pull that list up and we can yeah. kind of talk about some of those things? Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, Lori found a really cool article. Um, it's the topic, and I'll put the link in the description box too, is um, 10 essential tips for helping you multitask and kind of in a, these are more aimed towards career, but it can be definitely translated into other um, parts of your life. And I think we've kind of alluded to quite a few, you know, of them already. Um, number one is to set yourself real, realistic goals. You know, don't, like we've talked about, one step of the ladder at a time. Don't look at the top of the ladder because you'll never get there. It's tech realistic goals. Um, number two is to give yourself enough time to complete your goals. If you know that you can only do two things in an hour, don't say you're going to do four things. <laughs> so this brings up a really good point because this is a skill that does need to be built. I've got a few people currently in my life and I have a, a bestie across the state who her heart was there, you know, and, and even the couple of people that I'm thinking about that are in my life right now, their heart is there and they, they want to say yes to these things and do these things and commit themselves to these things, but they don't, honestly have a true representation of how long the thing the things that they're committing within that hour they don't have a good concept so building and developing knowing that cooking a meal takes about 10 or preparing your meal takes 10 to 15 minutes but if you don't know that you're like, well, I can do this and I can do that and I can do that all in 15 minutes. It's not, it, it defies science and logic. It's not even possible because each task will take so many minutes. So um, I think that it's very important mm -hmm. to, if you wanna build this skill, to understand how long particular tasks take you. Yeah, I think it's important. And I think, um, you know, I'm, you know, in the, in the, what I'm trying to do, you know, working and editing and formatting and book publishing and website design and some other technical stuff. It's really beneficial for me to know how long it takes me to do certain things, because then I can give an, an, an accurate quote and to the client saying, yeah, this is going to take me eight hours. I'm not going to work on it in one day, but it could take me a week, you know? And so those are realistic things. Don't, um, and you don't want to overcommit to something because then as you continue to overcommit, then you're burning yourself out. You're, you know, running yourself into the ground. You're taking a chance on losing the client, you know, losing that project. So yeah, there's a lot of, you know, uh, what's the word, uh, complications by not knowing that. So um, on the list, number three is to write a list. Um, write down, jot down, whether it's, you know, writing down just the to-do list for the day or the week or looking at, you know, having a calendar. You know, um, Lori and I have a calendar, that's her and I, and we, every time she has an appointment or I have something going on or we do something together, we put it in the calendar. 
not more it's more just so in a week when we're like okay what's what are we doing tomorrow and we look I'm like oh yeah you have an appointment tomorrow I we forgot about or something like that which we did this week you know I was like oh that's right you know she's like I felt like there's something this week and then we had an appointment so um lists can look differently for everybody they can be the the the, the one two three how to do something or it could be the the items that need to be done um and then kind of going along with that is to prioritize what's important. Um, you know, everything that you need to do is important, but certain ones need to be done more so than others. Um, doing the laundry could maybe wait, whereas a doctor's appointment is like a number one priority. Um, we can do the laundry anytime. Um, and then plan your week day, day by day. Again, another scheduling type of thing. Not everything has to be done today. And I know there's scriptures that say, you know, don't put off today what you, you know, what or tom for tomorrow, what you could do today. So there's definitely some like scriptures about it, but I think God doesn't want us to burn ourselves out doing everything at once and then tomorrow having nothing to do. So we just have to be mindful of what we're doing. I think um, this is a really good place <laughs> to, you were talking about reserving judgment. Mm -hmm good and bad and if we can all look at that even our lists and our schedules as not good and bad things not deficient or successful but just as what they are lists and things and guidelines so that we can order our day better but even when we don't do it exactly like the list says or we don't get everything done on the list we can celebrate what we did get done and then plan for tomorrow what we you know put add that in fold it in but not with judgment not with negativity right right because if we do that then we don't get to learn amen, amen. and and the only way we're going to be able to learn is to be able to go okay so this doesn't work, but maybe if I do this and this, and so it's constant experimentation of seeing what will work and not work and not feeling defeated, but rather energized towards like, okay, well, now I know, right. now I know that doesn't work, or now I know that does work. Um, and so constantly being open to learning and uh, yeah, so no qualifiers of good or bad. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I, again, that kind of goes back with knowing and communicating, because if you know sorry, I've tried that and it doesn't work for me that way. You can communicate that to your team, your group, your family me member, person you're working with. And it being open communication is always better than no communication at all. Or yeah. them making assumptions that, well, you just can't do it. Or, you know, it's not that you can't do it. You just have a different way of doing it. Um, and so again, kind of the list and planning things is group tasks together. Um, if you know that you have to do laundry chores, you know, dishes, figure out a way to do them together. Can you do laundry at the same time as dishes? Can you start the laundry and put the dishes, you know, that for work? Can you, um, if I know I have three different books to edit, how can I do them together? Can I do the, all the covers at the same time? Can I edit all at once, like do all three books? editing and then go on to formatting for everything at the same time. So I'm not having, you know, am I formatting this one and editing this one and doing the cover of this one, you know, cause that can get, you can make it mixed up easily. Um, again, another one is number seven is work at a steady pace. Let's not, you know, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, those sprints, you run really quick, get as fast as you can, the shortest amount of distance, and then you're done. And it's like you hit this wall. Whereas a marathon, you just kind of keep going at a steady pace and you'll get there. The tortoise and the hare. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, another thing, avoid distractions. Everybody gets distracted differently. I get distracted by, I was talking earlier, worded music. So often I have to avoid that. So Lori chooses not to, or that's different for Lori. She oh, doesn't put on get my headphones. Or yeah, if, if she knows I'm out in the living room and I'm doing a project and she doesn't want to interrupt, she'll put her headphones on. Um, so again, it's communication. We've discussed that. We've talked about it. We've been honest with each other. This is where we're at. How can we help each other 
get what we need done without interrupting. Um, so yeah, communication, super important. And then, oh, T, did you have something to say? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I saw you moving. I was like, oh, she, okay. And then number, um, number nine is allow yourself regular breaks. Your day doesn't Team have to be done this in one up minutes. earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give yourself breaks. I, that is one that um, definitely came with experience and maturity and time for me and realizing that how important, you know, a break can be or that little power nap or, you know, I was out with, um, my other caregiver the other day, we were running some errands and there was a quiet moment. And I, I said to him, I need to just kind of close my eyes for a minute um, and just kind of recenter. He goes, okay. And I was able, I was in a, he was with me. So I felt like I was in a safe space and a, a good environment. And I just closed my eyes and was able to just ground myself and just recenter. And it was, it was so helpful. And then I felt like I was able to open my eyes just a couple minutes later. I, I know it wasn't more than five minutes. It was probably two to three. But for me, it was just that act of stopping mm -hmm. and, and just allowing myself to just turn inward for a moment and relax. And then I, I felt like the rest of the day went much better. And all I did was take a little break. And I, I, I found it to be, proper, but it's something I had to learn. Right. And it's something that I had to not put judgment on. We do, T, you brought it up. We live in a world that it's go, 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 go. We have to be, if we are not go, going at Mach 2 with our hair on fire, which is exactly what I used to do because I bought into that rat race craziness, you know? And now I've learned that be methodical, all the things, right? But put them together and take breaks. It's actually better, it makes us better. It, we're able to accomplish so much more and be so much more attentive to ourselves and others and whatever task we're doing, so. Amen. And the final uh, tip, at least in this article, was remain focused. <clears throat> um, that is easily, it's easy to get unfocused. It's, and, you know, certain projects require a little more focus because of the um, importance or um, in, you know, necessity of it, whereas other things are, you know, maybe not as much, but you want to be efficient and staying focused in what you're doing um, is important because it's, it's sometimes better to finish something. Cause I know for me, like if I don't finish something and I just leave it to the next day, like my brain just doesn't turn off. And so like, until it's done, like, so I'm like, it's just easier for me to do it. Well, I can't remember what I was doing the other day. Oh, I was editing something. I was working on my book. <laughs> I'm trying to get my book published this year. And so I'm trying to remain focused on it because I know how our weeks get. I know how our schedule looks sometimes. And I'm like, when I have those moments to sit down and just work on it, I need to stay focused on it. I can't keep getting up and going and pacing or thinking and doing all this stuff. I'm like, I actually got to put time to it um, because it's a desire of mine. It's a, it's a, it's an important goal for me. And it's easy to lose focus. It is. It's very easy. But when we are able to do it, God, oh, we're able to accomplish a lot and really yeah. succeed at, at whatever it is we put our mind to do. So. so I put together a small list of my own. Great. I love it. <laughs> as we go. were talking. Lay so just some it. things that were popping up as we were talking. So uh, the, the first two are, they kind of go together. Uh, and these are just words that I wrote down. Stigma and judgment. Is there a stigma to a certain personality type or a trait that in how we how we do things? 
And um, is there judgment involved? Now that can be us putting the stigma and judgment onto ourselves, or is it being put onto us from others? Like um, sometimes how we talk, like you said, EJ, how we communicate. If we're like, I wouldn't do it that way. What just happened there, right? right? It's like, great, you wouldn't do it that way, but doesn't mean it's the wrong way. There's more than one way to do things. Um, another yeah, word I'm that I, go ahead. The other, you know, the old phrase, but there's more than one way to, yeah, I'm not going to say it, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's more than one way to get to the zoo. Um, there you go. <laughs> uh, the, the next word, intention. What is our intent? What is the other person's intent? Mm -hmm. um, if we do something with intention, um, it, it, it might get done neater. Now, some of us kind of like flying by the seat of our pants, but we sometimes shouldn't. <laughs> we need to stop and know what our intention is. What are we wanting to get done? Otherwise, for me, if I'm flying by the seat of my pants and I'm not doing things with intent, I may end up over in the next town rather than home because I just, you know, flew by the seat of my pants. Uh, attention. What are we giving attention to? Mm -hmm. So if we want something, we need to attend to that and do it with intention. Um, and then motivation. What is our motivation? What motivates us to get this done? Now, dishes is to get them clean. Right. <laughs> that's it. Well, for me, I also enjoy doing them because that's some peaceful time and I like the process. It, it speaks to me. But for some people, that's not the case. It's just to get it done. Um, and then how important is this thing to me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are things that I think that impact. How likely are we to multitask and complete tasks? Mm -hmm. Is is around those words. See, I need you list people in my life. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a point where list making lists be can become problematic. I used to make lists of what lists I need to make. You're speaking my roommate's language for sure sometimes. <laughs> <clears throat> I would what, have what pages say, in a notebook of that. <laughs> what I want to say is that- It's so fun. I know. I, she loves making your list. Um, but what I've learned through all this, but also through life, right? You're right. Um, EJ and I are planning a, a big road trip. Okay. I know that I don't want to get on the road and not have checked the tires and know that there's a jack in the car in case we have to change a flat tire or a battery charger. Or I totally understand that they're important things and they're things that need to be done. But where I know that I don't have a lot of knowledge about those things and she has much more knowledge about those things, I am totally comfortable relinquishing that and saying, I know that those are her skills. We're not gonna get on the road and not have a map because it's a priority to her. So. I've been okay with, that's why I've said to herself, you just let me know when you need my help. Do you need me to hang something up? Do you need me to um, help clean out the car? Do you, whatever it is I can do to help you, I am happy to assist you. But I also know that those are her strengths and they also bring her peace and doing all that stuff makes her a much happier person. And we're gonna have a better road trip that way. So yes. So I think it's well, good to be able to, to honor and know mm -hmm. what other people's gifts are and use them because that's right. not my strength. Yeah. Amen. No, that's totally true. And I was just thinking about this and it kind of goes along. Like I grew up going to road trip on road trips when I was a kid and I saw my parents and watched what they did. You know, my dad made sure that there was a hatchet in the car. He made sure that, yes, he, he took a gun with us and, you know, you know, he made sure we were protected and he, you know, he would like, he, he'd driven the same route for 50 years, but still looked at a map every time. Like, just like he, he would study the maps just crazy. And I'm not doing that, but I'm definitely 
like maps are important. Like if we're out in an area where we might not have so, so much service, you know, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, we can, might need to have, you know, some maps. And, you know, I remember my mom like planning out like what food are we going to take? What are we going to have for coolers? And so like things I've learned. And so a lot of that, like we were talking about learning skills and learning the multitasking. What did you learn from? Like, did you learn from parents that maybe did that? And so I thankfully have some experience with helping my parents plan trips, especially as I got older and learned to start driving and stuff. And I can maybe partake in some of the driving. Um, and so I have some of those skills and yeah, and I'm glad Lori's willing to let me kind of nerd out, I guess, <laughs> by doing this. Um, and in hopes that, you know, we can do another trip, you know, in the future. And, um, you know, I know her ther uh, therapist has you know given us some kind of homework. He's, he's really excited about us maybe, you know, doing this trip. He's like, well, you guys need to take like a bus trip, like together, like with no real destination in mind, just to like, see how you guys handle it. And I'm thinking, okay, but where are we going and what are we doing and why are we doing this? <laughs> she got but, so uncomfortable with that idea. She literally came up with 20 reasons why we couldn't do that and why we shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, it was, but then like after that, I, there was a day, I think it was last week and we had finished up some projects, a couple of meetings that we had. I said, okay, let's get in the car. And we literally got in the car and we went for a drive. There was no destination in mind. We had kind of a vague idea of maybe where we wanted to go. We didn't end up to either place. Um, we just went down this long dirt road that just ended stopping at, at some dead end. And I was like, okay, well, I guess we're turning around. And uh, it, we just kind of went. So I know we didn't take the bus trip that he recommended, but we managed it. And at some point we got back on a main highway that Lori was familiar with. And she's like, oh yeah, I'll just go here. And we're you know back, you know, back in our area. Um, yeah, yeah so I, I thought we, like, did, we handled that well. Yeah, we went pretty good. And, and she's like, don't freak out that we're lost. And I'm like, I'm not freaking out. We're not lost. There's GPS. We know where we are. We just go back on the road we were on, you know, it's like, and she's like, you know, she's like, we're not lost. And I was like, I'm not worried that we're lost. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to this trip because I feel like it would be a good thing. And we've taken road trips before, but they've mostly been day trips. We've never done yeah. an overnight where we're staying somewhere or, you know, in a strange place, in the car, camping, any kind of that stuff. And we're not only doing it for one night, we're going to be gone for 11 days. So we have, you know, more than a week's worth of time where we're in very different scenarios and situations and possible uncomfortable, you know, things or possible times of conflict. And we're going to have to figure out how to yeah. work through those things on the fly. Yeah. I've got to say a couple, a, a couple of things for, Oh, sorry about the squeaky chair. But anyway, first of all, sometimes we get so caught up on where we're going because we're so excited to be there that we forget about the trip along the way Amen. and how more, um, how much better that experience as a whole is if we enjoy the trip and the destination. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, and a lot of times, um, what keeps me from freaking out or panicking when things come up is because I have this mantra in my head that it's just part of the adventure. Like I have been through so many adventures. I know there's another side to it. Mm -hmm. And I know that nothing is so catastrophic. Usually I get that things happen, accidents happen, horrible things can happen. But most of the time, nothing is so bad. No experience is so bad that you can't look back at it. And it's a great story. Right. Like I've been stranded on a pass in the middle of summer when the heat was really bad with my three children with no gas. And in that moment, and there was no walking because there was nowhere to walk alongside the road. I could have panicked and I probably did for like 30 seconds of like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do? We just got the, cause we just got done camping. We just got the camping gear and, and pulled out some shade and some seats and just sat alongside the road. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what we were going to do. Yeah. And an officer stopped by and I learned something amazing. They can run from their vehicles, a gas hose from their engine not their gas tank, their engine into your gas tank and give you gas. 
How awesome. That's awesome. Now, I wouldn't have learned that if I wouldn't have run out of gas in the middle of that pass. Right. And he was really nice. And we had a great conversation and it was an experience for the kids and, and mm-hmm. whatnot. And so, but I would never have had that if that mm-hmm. thing had not had happened. So yeah. Yeah. it's, it's got to count along the way too, not just where you're going. Yeah. And, yeah. And Amen. I can, I can, I've, I remember my mom spending months like planning something and then like her not enjoying any of it because she's so focused on what didn't get done and how things weren't, you know, the way she planned it. So I'm definitely trying to not be that. Um, but I'm also trying to like preemptively plan for a few things, you know, like, well, if we, you know, you know, well, I certainly was more likely to, to make sure my tank was full before I left on the next trip. Right. You know, I certainly uh, make sure I have certain things in my car. But why? Because things have happened in the past and I didn't have those things. And now I know it might be a little more comfortable if I have them. Yeah. Right. Jumper right. cables. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like one of the local gas stations, um, you know, some of them will have like their point system, whatever. So we just went at one and I picked up one of their free cards, not thinking about it. And when I logged in and like signed up for it, I was looking, I was like, oh, there's one of these pretty much along every route we're going. Um, So I was like, okay, cool. At least we have a familiar type of gas station to stop at that Mm -hmm. may have more reasonable gas to like, okay, cool. This might actually be beneficial to like continue shopping here. And um, yeah, so it's great to plan and be flexible. Right. And so for Gumby. Right. And I, and I, again, you know, we kind of, I want to wrap this up, you know, with multitasking. And I think that's important. I think we all can look at different things and look at each other and be like, that's not right. Or you can't do this, or you've got to do this together. And everybody's going to be different. And the whole reason why we're doing all these episodes on personalities is for that reason. There are 16 major personalities. There's definitely more. And all those traits that impact the personalities like that's, that's a big amount of people and not, there's not 5%. The, the world is not divided in exactly, you know, 16. There might be one, a, one group that's a very small amount of people and there may be a large group that's another group. So the smallest percentage is, if I remember correctly, I think it's logician is 2% of the population and uh, protagonist is 3% of the population. And I know that because we just did this uh, activity in our work team and we have a couple of logicians and a couple of protagonists. And then the defenders make up like, I don't want to get it wrong, but I think it's like 13%. I think defenders yeah. are of the 16, the largest portion. And I think it's just in the population who have taken the quiz, but I'm not really mm-hmm. sure. Uh, or the Myers-Briggs. They're basically right. the same thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, So I think that's important to, to kind of remind ourselves is like, it's, you know, like we are given like a percentage of how much we are something or not something, but then like in the personalities, there's a percentage, like some there's more or less. Um, And so some are, some are going to find multitasking easier, switching between tasks quicker is going to come easier to some people than others. I think parents do a great job of multitasking because you know, they joke about moms having eyes in the back of their head because they know when they're, if it's quiet in the house, something is wrong. <laughs> um, and they could be in the middle of making dinner and talking on the phone, yet they can still know something just happened to little, their, their son or their daughter. Um, so A plus for the parents out there who can multitask. Um, so, yeah, so I think, I think this is a great spot to wrap up. We are definitely going to have a few more episodes upcoming that are all kind of talking about different personalities and kind of how our personality traits that we talked about in episode 40 can impact our um, daily life, honestly, and our careers and all sorts of stuff. So thanks again, ladies. Yep. All right. Just a friendly reminder that anything discussed in this podcast is not to be used as a diagnosis or a replacement for conversations with your own doctors, therapists, psychologists, or medical professionals. This episode is on YouTube and most major podcast platforms. If you're not a subscriber, we'd love for you to be one. So click the subscribe button and like this video um, on YouTube to keep up with upcoming episodes. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as Behind the Mask PC. You can also email feedback or future episode ideas to BehindTheMaskPC at gmail.com. And to find us, EJ, Lori, and T online, links for us will be in the description box. And on behalf of the ladies and myself, thanks for listening. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye.